What's up guys, in today's video here, I got a bunch of cars together, well four, we got four cars together, as you've already seen. We've got uh, Angel's GTCS here, Michael brought his Whipple car by for us to use today, Paul's got the Pro Charger car, and Joel brought the Turbo Coyote car I put together earlier last year for him, uh, whenever he got his new TKM engine and everything. That car absolutely rips and gets down. So the whole purpose of this video today is, I wanna show you guys the difference in power adders. So we've got four different cars here, one is Angel's pretty much bone stock Coyote car. It's got muffler delete and resonator delete and uh, a catch cam. That's literally nothing, no drive shaft, sorry. Has a drive shaft, nothing else. This car is just completely stock. So we're gonna take this car out, drive it and say, yeah, oh, you know, this is what a stock Coyote drives like, yada, yada, yada. If you have a Coyote, you already know. If you don't have a Coyote, maybe this helps you decide whether or not you wanna buy one. The next car that we've got is gonna be Michael's S550. It's silver. Um, it's got a Gen 5 3 liter Whipple supercharger. That's going to be your positive displacement blower. Uh, this car is going to be just tire shredding torque down low and fantastic drivability. But this car is borderline sketch. This car makes just enough power that the tires that are on it don't really want to hold up to anything more than, than what it's already putting down. This car makes roughly 760 wheel according to the mass airflow charts. It hasn't been dynoed or anything, but according to how much airflow it's moving, that's about what it makes. Now, the next car that we've got here is going to be Paul's Pro Charger car. Pro Chargers are centrifugal superchargers, whereas, you know, your Whipple is going to be your positive, positive displacement. That's going to be like instant power, instant torque. It sits on top of the motor. As soon as you touch it, instant power. With your centrifugals, this is where you're going to start having uh, basically a belt-driven turbo in a sense. So, like, the harder you rev it, the higher the RPMs, the more power it's gonna make, right? But the cool thing about the Pro Chargers is they are really loud all the time because they're always making power. They're always making boost. They don't stop. So the advantage of that is, is you get this really loud, obnoxious, obnoxious, all right, bypass valve that bleeds off all this air. So like when you're riding through car shows downtown, you are the center of attention. And me personally, I like that, it's a lot of fun but it's a lot more boring red light to red light. Your positive displacement blower is gonna be a lot more fun red light to red light. And it's definitely a very, very enjoyable setup. We're gonna drive that in a minute. We're also gonna drive Paul's car here in a minute. Now we do have to be cautious on Paul's car. I will tell you this car dynoed 825 to the rear tires in fourth gear at Mustang week on VMP's dyno. This car did really, really well. Drove home with almost no issues. We ended up having a fuel pressure regulator that died. That, totally irrelevant to that whole situation. We bought a used fuel fuel system and that was just one of the things you get when you buy used parts. Highly recommend buy once, cry once, buy it new, be done. Don't buy used stuff. That's the problems that you run into and that's the problem that we had. But this car made 825. I don't remember the torque on that. I'll get it to you in a minute. But uh, this car only has a 700 horsepower rated McLeod single disc street extreme clutch in it. I put it in years ago so it has many thousands of miles of abuse and then a blower added to it and it it's at the end of its life we, if you put it on a sticky tire if we put the slicks on this car it will annihilate the clutch before we ever make a full rpm pull so we're going to be easy on this car today we are not going to absolutely rip the piss out of it but we are going to take it out and enjoy it and have some fun now the last car that we've got here today is going to be joel's 2011 turbo car it is a factory 6r80 It is a factory 6R80 2011 Mustang GT. It is a premium, so it is a little bit heavier. It's got the door subs, the nice stereo, stuff like that. This car, uh, a friend of mine actually bought it first and kind of built this car. It is just a base on three single 8096 kit. Uh, he has upgraded turbo since then. This car went 980s on foot brake like it was nothing. And uh, the car would not leave. We couldn't get, he couldn't get it figured out. He only got a couple passes, had engine issues. Well, Joel ended up putting a TKM built motor in this car, 2000 horsepower motor. And this car has been, I think a best of 867 or something like that. And it is now, instead of on an 8096, it's now on an 8589, which, you know, it seems like it's doing okay or struggling to get it. I think he's struggling to get it back where it was but he's definitely on the uphill side of that now because he found some transmission issues. And turns out all that stuff plays hand in hand. If it doesn't sync up and mesh perfectly, then you're gonna have a bad time. But he brought this car by today. We're gonna go out and take a ride in it as well. This car does have a cage and only two front seats because it is a drag and drive based car. So it is gonna be something that you can drive anywhere and everywhere. He drove it 45 minutes or an hour 
just to come hang out with us today so that we can shoot this video for you guys. Now, the biggest thing that I want people to notice on this stuff is we're gonna drive the turbo car, the centrifugal car, the positive displacement the positive, the positive displacement car and the stock car. And hopefully this helps you kind of decide if, you know, hey, if I'm wanting to buy a power adder, which one might be best for my personality or my lifestyle? What might be the best for my driving style? Which one might I like the most? Or maybe you just don't know the difference in all of these and this kind of helps show you where your differences are. Now, your turbo car is gonna have a lot of lag, so down low, you know, it's gonna be a little lazy, hesitant to come on. When it comes on, it's gonna come on really strong. Having said that, I'm gonna roll right on into, let's take Angel's car for a drive first. We'll start with the stock NA car, then we'll come back to the positive displacement car, then the Sentry car, and then the turbo car. And oddly enough, I actually did that for a reason. We'll go from no power adder to positive displacement, which is gonna be the most horsepower, the most torque right on the hit. Like as soon as you snap the throttle, you're gonna have instant power. Then we'll go to the centrifugal where your horsepower and torque will differentiate a whole bunch. Like you'll make, this car made like 825, but it only made like 700 pound foot, you know, is way down on the torque side. That's just how centrifugals are because the power comes in past the torque, the peak torque curve. That's the reason why these cars work really good on the street. They don't spin because they don't make a gobs, gobs of torque. Now the other car though, the turbo car, whereas we went from positive displacement to centrifugal, uh, this car is going to act like a belt driven turbo, all the powers up top. Then we're going to step to the turbo car that's actually probably making somewhere between 12 and 1300 in that ballpark range so we will be going from slowest to fastest as well so that stuff will be kind of factored in as well as we go in and make these drives so stay tuned and let's go find out how these things drive all right take us for a ride paul <laughs> big ears you know say about people with big ears they wear big hats big, big hats You don't have to be a car person to know that it's not supposed to make those noises. <laughs> stuff 
guy across the street from the shop trying to come find us. So uh, my, now he's got PTSD. I can't <laughs> hardly get him to do it.
off you. <laughs> He's a dead man. Right there. I see him already. It's like they knew. It's like they heard. Oh, were you, were you really picking on that eco boost? Seriously. <laughs> he was about to, wasn't he? Did you pull up there and go, I should have. Okay, this car is an attention board. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are. If you hear this car coming, you're going to look at it and draw all your attention straight to it. Yep. I concur. This so. car is uh, gnarly. So what's the general consensus of this car versus the Whipple car? If I was going to drive a car every day, I would drive the Whipple car because of the noise every day. If I wanted a car to go out on the weekends and, and, and you know, party and be, you know, cruise through Elizabeth and whoosh, whoosh, this, this would be more <laughs> what I'm what I'm talking so about. So you'd lean this more towards your weekend beater? Yeah, but I'm old. Well. You know, young guys, yeah, they probably, you guys probably like this, but I mean. I think for me, this would probably be my favorite to daily drive because I don't have to do anything stupid to get people's attention. <laughs> like. <laughs> this is true. Like, I don't have to be that guy that pulls out that gets sideways and eats a curb and crashes into the grass or something stupid. Whereas with the Whipple here. cart, huh? Alex is here. Alex. It's your sister. Oh, is she really? Yeah. Hmm. She was wanting me to see the baby. Oh. You better go. I know. I better go see the new baby. Toodles.